All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be talking about some more NBA trade rumors, um, some more asking prices, rumors, and stuff like that have been coming out in the past few days. And we're going to recap all of that here in today's video, talking about a bunch of different players and different teams and stuff like that as we reach closer and closer to the NBA trade deadline. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you do like the content around here, consider subscribing like turn notifications to us like that i'd really appreciate it we lived out a lot uh, we are on the road to 500 subscribers we just passed we up to 460 we actually had a huge subscriber jump um in the past few days so i appreciate you guys you know for hitting the subscribe button and if you do have the content hitting the subscribe button would mean a whole lot to me you know uh link to my twitter and tiktok tiktok stuff like that in the description down below and uh yeah don't waste any more of your time let's get right into it so the first person we're going to talk about here is DeJounte Murray. Of course, he's been a hot name in the trade market in the past few weeks, but the Atlanta Hawks were really struggling uh, right now on the outside looking in in terms of the playing, being very disappointing. And DeJounte Murray, you know, and the Hawks kind of trying to, you know, make this team different. You know, maybe try to trade some players, uh, you know, trying to retool this team. There's been reports come out that say the only players that are on touchball right now in Atlanta are Trey Young and Jalen Johnson, who's been having a great season. Uh, and everyone else is kind of available, which I said a few weeks ago. I made a video about the Atlanta Hawks. I said, like, they should, that should be the move. I don't think anybody should be safe besides Trey, you know, Jalen Johnson, maybe a Yeko Kongwu. But after that, like, anybody should be, you know, kind of out there so they can retool this team and try to build a better team around Trey Young in Atlanta. And DeJounte Murray is a big name that could get traded. You could get some valuable things back for him, you know. Uh, and there's a report the other day, too, by Kevin O'Connor from The Ringer saying that the asking price for Atlanta are two first-round picks in return. Because, if you remember, a few years ago when they made the DeJounte Murray trade, they gave up two first-round picks in their own right to San Antonio to get DeJounte Murray, you know, and a pick swap as well. Yeah, right now, that's looking like, you know, the Spurs won this. <laughs> Spurs got a fleece getting a 2025 and a 2027 first-round pick, you know, from Atlanta for DeJounte Murray. And now the Hawks are kind of trying to re that we coop their assets in a DeJounte Murray trade, which I think they potentially could get. Um, I don't think it's guaranteed they get two first round picks. DeJounte Murray is really good, but two first round picks, I don't know, especially for because they said also that he wants to go to a playoff team. And right now, a lot of playoff teams maybe don't have those two first round picks. I don't know. Teams that do have more, like the Knicks and stuff like that, but not everybody just has two first round picks. And with the Hawks being, you know, so bad, I don't know if teams going to, I don't know. Potentially they could. I don't know. Uh, there's been a couple teams in talks with them, obviously. Um, there's a report that came out, I think, a week ago saying that there are five teams in talking to DeJounte Murray, um, talking about DeJounte Murray. One team is the L.A. Lakers, obviously. They've been really struggling as well this season, and there's been a lot of talk about maybe needing a third guy. With LeBron and AD not out there, they need a third guy, DeJounte Murray. I feel like that would be a really solid move for the Lakers. I like DeJounte Murray in L.A. with the Lakers. Give him another ball handler, another guy that can you know, score. You know, take some pressure off LeBron and AD and give you 20 to 25 potentially if he needs to. Defensively, you know, even though since he's been in Atlanta, he hasn't really been the defender that he used to be back in San Antonio when he was an all-defensive member. But maybe he can get that back when he goes to the Lakers. He's surrounded by better defense and better coaching. Well, maybe better coaching and stuff like that. But I like that for, you know, DeJounte. And I like that for the Lakers. What they can get for what the Lakers have to give up for DeJounte, I'm not sure. Um, they, I don't know if they have two first-round picks. Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, and what Atlanta would want from the Lakers is probably Austin Reeves. Do you give up Austin Reeves for the Lakers? Do you get DeJounte Murray? I don't know. Maybe. You know, you're definitely not against it. You definitely want to throw in other pe pe people before you give Austin Reeves up, obviously, because he's an important part of the team. But, you know, if that's what you have to do to get DeJounte, you know, that might be what you have to do. The Spurs are another team. You know, going back to his former team, going back to San Antonio, the Spurs, of course, Young team, they really lack point guard play. And DeJounte Murray going back there, a system he already knows, a coach and, you know, organization he's already familiar with. Maybe he gets back to his old ways when he was an all-star before he got traded to Atlanta. And he could help out Wemby, you know, so that could be a solid thing as well. If I'm the Spurs, do I want to give up two first-round picks for DeJounte Murray? I don't know, you know, because, again, we're still having a very young team and we're probably not going to be competing for a few years, a little while longer. So don't want to risk... Giving up those two first-round picks back. 
basically for DeJounte because there's a report that report also by Kevin O'Connor were saying that the Spurs might not want to give up those two first round picks back because they feel like they're too valuable now, especially with how Atlanta's kind of the direction they're going in. You know, it looks like they're probably going to miss on the playoffs again this year. And then the pick, the, tw- the their pick is a 2025 pick. So next year, and who knows what Atlanta's going to look like next year, especially if they trade off, you know, guys like Bogdan Bogdanovich and Clint Capella and stuff like that, you know. So we'll see what happens. But DeJounte Murray, he's a really valuable people person on the trade block. I feel like a lot of teams are probably going to go after him because I feel like he can fit in a couple different situations. So I'm very excited to see where he can go. The next thing I'm going to talk about is probably the biggest guy on the trade block. And, you know, a big name in this trade deadline and stuff like that. It's Pascal Siak. Obviously, he's been a guy that for the past, like, two years has been talked about in the trade rumors a lot, especially this year now with the last year of his contract when the Raptors being bad. And there's also reports saying that, you know, there's probably, it's almost like indefinite that he's going to get traded and he will not be a Toronto Raptor uh, for much longer. Um, of course, it's tough to trade him because he's gotten the last year of his contract. You know, and even though he is a really good player, all-star, like 20-something points per game and type of player that could really go to a team and help them out and boost them, you know, it's talk of he's on the last year of his contract and there's more reports coming out in the last few days saying that, you know, there's a good chance that wherever team he gets traded to, you know, he won't resign immediately. They, they can't give him the guarantee in that he wants to test out his free agency market because he won't. He will also be one of the better players on the free agency market and could get some money, a lot of money there as well. So it's kind of been, you know, not saying messing up, but it's kind of been, a, that's a big part, obviously, of his trade market and value is because he's on the last year of his contract and there's no guarantee that if we trade for him, you know, we you know, can keep them. So we don't want to give up anything super valuable that we think is really going to be big pieces like picks or young, really good young players. If, you know, let's say he comes here and then he stays here for half a year, we lose in the second round and then he leaves. And so I was like, so we just gave up a couple first round picks and a good young player that we thought could develop nicely in our system for two months for a rental, basically, you know? So that kind of, that's a big part, obviously. That was a big thing with the Kings the other week. And there's talks about how the Kings and the Raptors were really engaged on a Pascal Siakam trade, but then the Kings kind of backed out of it because, you know, they could, Pascal couldn't give the guarantee and couldn't guarantee him that, you know, I'll resign in Sacramento. And so it's like, so, all right, so but we don't want to give up guys like Keegan Murray or a couple picks for you if, you know, we can't get you to guarantee that we're going to resign and that you can just leave. You know, so that's been a big piece of this Pascal Siakam trade talks uh other teams the mavericks have been a team in the past few days that have sparked a lot of interest in um pascal siakam uh there's a report that said the mavericks think that he's their missing piece you know and to potentially be a contender um doing i don't know about that but i think that's a really good team luca Kyrie, pascal that's a pretty solid big three you know even though say we want about pascal and the way he plays stuff like that pascal siakam is a really good player you know and even though he's not having the best year this year you know uh, he's still a very good player so having luca Kyrie especially the way Kyrie's been playing. Then you have another, a third guy, Pascal's another all-star type of player that, you know, they can go off for 20, 25, 30 if you need him to. Like, and he's a pretty solid defender in his own right. So, yeah, that would be big for Dallas. But what they probably have to give up, probably maybe a Josh Green probably be in that mix. Tim Hardaway Jr. maybe for money, even though Tim Hardaway Jr. has been amazing this season. You know, you have to sacrifice, you know. Got to give up if you want to get. So maybe tomorrow, Junior, a couple picks. I don't know. I, I more the more and more I think about Pascal to Dallas, the more and more I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's that's a pretty solid move. Of course, Indiana has been a team that's been talked about a lot for Pascal. Um, Indiana, Golden State, obviously, because of, we're going to talk about Golden State in a few minutes. But yeah, I'm very interested. I think Pascal is probably going to get traded. I hope, I love to see Pascal get traded because I feel like I again I really do feel like he can go. He whatever team he goes to, he's going to go there, and it's going to be a big piece for them. You know, because I think Pascal's a really, really good player. Could help you win. Um, so yeah, very interested to see where Pascal goes. Uh, very interested to see what the, again what the trade it looks like. What team do it? Does a team do the Raptors get desperate at one point? Like it's the trade deadline and they can't find anything. They're like, ah, you know what? We'll just take whatever. You know, and kind of you know just kind of give up. Or does a team really go out there and bite the bullet and be like, you know what? We really do believe Pascal is the missing piece. And we believe we can get him to resign. So, you know, let's just go in and do it. You know, or is it a, it probably will end up in somewhere in the in between of those two scenarios. But yeah, very interested to see where Pascal lands. 
And now talk about the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they've been really, really struggling this season. Um, they are currently 18-22. and 22. They're sitting at 12th in the Western Conference, and they had a bad loss last night to the Memphis Grizzlies. They lost to Vince Williams and Gigi Jackson last night on TNT with their full lineup with Draymond back. And so, yeah, the Warriors really need to make some moves. That's been no secret this year that there's been a lot of stuff going on in Golden State and that they really need to make a move. They want to still be able to compete. And there's been rumors and reports flying throughout the past few days. There's a report, I think, by Shams or someone. I think it was Shams saying that anyone besides Steph, you know, is on the is on the block or is, like, you know, what they're willing to listen to, which I think at this point it should be, you know. Like, Steph has been good. He has been in a little bit of a slump recently, but it's still Steph Curry, obviously. And you still want to win and compete with him around because he wants to be in Golden State. But it's just they have not had any consistent help there's been no consistency. There's been just, it just has not looked like the Warriors team that we know. You know, a lot of the players are older. A lot of players aren't playing as good. And, you know, they, they got to make some moves, especially if they want to keep this contention with them around, you know. And a, a guy that's been talked about as well in the trade block is Andrew Wiggins. Uh, well, Andrew Wiggins has not been good ever since, you know, he has just had a bad year. Um, he does not look like anywhere near the same player that he was a few years ago when he was third, dang near second best player on a championship team when the Warriors won it. And it doesn't help that he's also got a pretty hefty contract on his hands, you know. And there's been a lot of people talk about Wiggins potentially being traded. They moved him around in the lineup and stuff like that. And there's been reports from other management and other stuff, guys saying that, you know, there's not really much value for Andrew Wiggins right now, you know, which I can't really disagree with or say because he has not been playing good it's not up to that contract absolutely not but he just has not looked like Andrew Wiggins you know that we saw a few years ago where we were like dang he really revived his career and he was the third or second best player on an NBA championship team and he was one of the better role players wings in the league you know that that guy I don't know where that guy is right now but it's not he's not here because this Andrew Wiggins I don't know where he is right now you know and there's been talks about the Warriors maybe trying to trade him, you know, and try to, you know, get some pieces back for him. I don't know what teams will really want to bite that bullet on Andrew Wiggins. I'm not really sure. Again, there's just no value really for him. Um, but even besides Andrew Wiggins, guys like Jonathan Kuminga, you know, potentially being on the move, you know, with him and Steve Kerr's kind of butting heads and stuff like that. Clay Thompson, you know, in the last year of his contract, he's going to be up for a contract extension soon. And it's like, you know, he's not having a great year. He does not look like the same Clay Thompson that we know. He's getting older. And it's kind of like, you know, new management. Do we really want to, you know, pay Clay Thompson this money? Because he's going to ask for money, you know. But do we want to pay him? Not really. So maybe he could be on the move. Uh, Chris Paul got hurt again. He's going to be out for a little while. Um, do we trade him and try to get some pieces? Like, there's just a lot of things going on in Golden State right now. Moves need to be made. Mike Dunleavy Jr., it, the clock's on you now, bud. The clock, it's on you. You got to go out there and do something. Because right now, this team is not, not good. It's not it right now. So they they really need to step up and make some moves and do some things. Whether it's Andrew Wiggins, whether it might be have to be sacrificing Clay Thompson or Draymond Green, something to get this team going. Because this team right now... If you play after the season, I don't think it's going to work in your favor. So the Warriors desperately need, need to make some moves. Next, I want to talk about Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma is a very interesting player on the market. You know, uh, this obviously just got paid a big contract of, like, what, a five-year 100 mil or something like that. I'm sorry, four years, 90 mil. You know, not a not a crazy contract and also de decreases in value. So it goes from 23 to 21 to 19, stuff like that. So, yeah, he... Um, he's a really good player. He's been the best player on the Wizards by far. You know, he's having a great year. Average 22, 6, and 4. 46% of the field, 35% from 3. He's been consistently the best player in Washington. And he's had a really good year. In the last few years, ever since he got to Washington, he's really revived his career and been really, really good. And um, I think he should be traded. I think I would love to see him traded. You know, I would love to see him on a new team, on a team that competes in a playoff team because I really think he can help, you know, as a 4 that can do a lot of different things. He can shoot the ball well. He could go score. He can give you 20 to 25 if you need him to, maybe even 30, you know, if he's on, he's on one. Defensively, he's not bad. You know, he could play make a little bit. You've seen it with Washington. He can rebound the ball. Like, he can do a lot of different things. And he's used to kind of playing in a 
kind of lower position. He was behind Bradley Beal and Porzingis, and he was behind LeBron and AD, obviously. So he knows, like, kind of his role. And, yeah, I think he's a really valuable player. And I hope he does get traded. Because uh, I've talked about this because there's reports the past few days saying that, you know, sources are saying that his price is about two first-round picks or something similar to two first-round picks, you know, which I'm not mad at Washington for asking for. Will they get two first-round picks for Kyle Kuzma? I'm not very sure because a lot of people are definitely going to be questioning, well, he's putting up good numbers on a bad team and stuff like that. But, I mean, Kyle, can't deny Kyle Kuzma is really good. I really, I'm a fan of Kyle Kuzma. I love how, what he's been doing in Washington. And I think he deserves to be on a playoff team that is competing, you know, so he can show his real value and who he is. Teams, potentially, uh, the Kings, obviously, if they don't hit on Pascal Siakam, where the Pascal Siakam thing doesn't go right, go for Kyle Kuzma. You know, he is on a longer contract, four years, 90 mil. But then again, you want to get Pascal Siakam to pay him. You know, you're probably going to have to pay Pascal more than Kyle. So why not go get Kyle Kuzma, you know, as a guy that probably fit in the system better, you know. Um, you might have to go maybe a little more for Kyle than Pascal Siakam just because of, you know, Kyle, the Wizards are probably going to be staying more firm, firm on Kyle Kuzma than Pascal Siakam was on the last year of his deal in Toronto. But I don't think that's a bad thing for, Pat, for you know, the Kings. The Pacers, potentially, even though, again, they want probably more defensive guy. Kyle Kuzma, okay, defensively, he's not bad, but, you know, he's not the greatest defender. But I wouldn't mind Indiana, Kyle Kuzma in Indiana. Just, hey, we're going all in on offense. We're going in on bucket getting. You know, we're just going to put up 140, 150 points a game. And Kyle Kuzma is definitely going to be able to do that and help that, especially now when you go on a stretch like now where Tyrese Halliburton is injured and stuff like that. Kyle Kuzma could be a big piece to that Indiana team. Uh, even the 76ers would be an interesting team. You know, Sixers have a lot of expiring contracts and money and stuff like that. They just got picks in the James Harden trade. You know, maybe, why not, if I'm Philly, make a call and see, hey, you know, I like that Kyle Kuzma. I got to have Maxi Kuzma and Joel Embiid. You know, that's that's pretty solid. I think Kyle Kuzma can go a lot of different places in the fit because I feel like he's a really, really good player. It can fit in a lot of different scenarios. I would love to see where he could go. If he does get traded, I'm not counting on a Kyle Kuzma trade, this trade deadline, because I won't be surprised if the Wizards kind of keep him around. But, you know, I would I would love to see him get traded. And the last team we're going to talk about is actually, coincidentally, the Indiana Pacers. Uh, they've been a team that has been talked about for a lot this season of potentially, you know, being a team that could swipe in and make a move. You know, uh, they're a young team that has really surprised a lot of teams this year. Uh, they're currently sixth right now in the Eastern Conference. They've been one of the better teams in the NBA. Their offense has been spectacular. The defense has been horrible. And there's been talks about potentially getting defensive-minded players or maybe going after that star type of player to fit next to Tyrese Halliburton. They were in talks for OG Anobi, but then the OG Anobi got traded to the Knicks. Pascal Siakam has been a guy that has been heavily linked to Indiana as well. And, yeah, the Pacers do have some things that potentially could get you them some solid players. You know, Buddy Heald... He was a guy that right before the season, him and the Pacers couldn't really agree on a contract extension. And I don't even remember, and probably a lot of people don't even remember, but the Pacers actually said, like, hey, Buddy Heal's on the market. Like, we're probably trading Buddy Heal, you know? And even though he's really fit really well with this Indiana team, he's a sniper, obviously. He's fit well with this high octane offense. But at the end of the day, he's probably not going to be around in Indiana for much longer, you know, because Indiana, again, contract extension he's up for. Pacers aren't giving him the right money. Buddy Heal's like, hey, I don't want to be here. And I'm sure a lot of teams are paying him money because he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league, you know. So, you know, a pack. There's been talking about in the past few days. Mark Stein reported it that package. They Pacers have been building a trade package around Buddy Heald, a first-round pick, and maybe some other things. Who knows? Potentially go get something big, you know. Um, Buddy Heald, a first-round pick, and yeah. There's also been talks though about Indiana saying that they're kind of not don't want to give up any young players. Guys like Benedict Mather and Jarius Walker who has been heavily linked for a Pascal Siakam trade potentially. Um, they were hesitant to give up that, so they'd rather give up the first-round pick as well as Buddy Heal. They have guys like Jalen Smith, who's been playing really good this year. That could be a little salary dumb little thing for teams maybe to catch on to. I don't know. Um, will they get Pascal Siakam for that? I don't think so, unless, again, unless the Raptors get really desperate and kind of like, all right, we have to trade this guy. We'll just take whatever. Okay, sure, we'll take Buddy. We'll take a first-round pick, I guess. You know? But... I think Indiana is a very solid um, team that, you know, should go out there and make a move. You know, they're a team that's very exciting to watch. They're having a lot of success this year. And I think getting a wing player, especially maybe more like a guy that could play a two-way type of player, 
you know, could really help them because, again, their defense, especially on the perimeter, is pretty bad, you know. So I think getting a good perimeter defensive type player that also can shoot threes or could also get you some scoring, you know, could really go a long way for this Indiana Pacers team, you know. And I like when young teams kind of go in and be like, all right, let's go out there and let's try to make a move, you know, try to make a move, try to get something that we really need. In Indiana, getting a defensive type player would be really good. What players they could get, I'm not really sure. You know, I can't really think of any right now, but I definitely do believe there's some a player or some players out there that Indiana could get, potentially with that Buddy Heald first round pick, maybe Jalen Smith, that could get something decent. I'm not saying they're going to get a superstar, Paul George, or anything like that, but I think they can get a solid player. I don't think they need that. I think they need they can get another good, solid player, you know, that could start for them potentially, be on that level. Like, it will do wonders. It will do a lot for this Indiana Pacers team. They're a team I'm very interested to see what happens at the trade deadline, you know, especially because they have a little cap space because a lot of their players are young, you know. So maybe, I don't know, Indiana could be a team that could come out and make a surprise move and you're like, oh, shoot, Indiana did that? Wow. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, if you the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do also like that. I'd really appreciate it. We really love that a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.